people shouldn't do that on print on demand either. Right. Yeah, they shouldn't do that either. But as, you know, the law is very, it can be very, there's a lot of gray areas in the law about it. Uh... Hey everyone, I'm here with David Olenek, um, awesome t-shirt designer and just designer in general. He's been doing it for a long time. One of my favorites. Um, so glad to have you on here, David. Good to have you on, on Detour Shirts. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me. For those of you that are not familiar with David, I'm going to read a bio uh, of him. David Olenek's distinctive personification of food, objects, and animals are inspired by a lifetime of anxiety and half price margaritas. After a 15-year career as an art director and designer developing t-shirts for top names in the fashion industry, he's been a full-time independent artist since 2012. Licensing his self-directed art in nearly every conceivable product category, both online and in-store with major and minor retailers. When David's not creating, he enjoys museums, avoiding carbs, and going around telling people that simple designs are actually the hardest kind to create. David, thanks so much for being here um, sure. with Detour Shirts. You did a pretty good job. You did a pretty good job with that. I put, <laughs> some, I put some big words in your mouth. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I made you deliver a couple of jokes. That's not easy. I, I tried to, I tried to uh, get them right, but you're so funny, um, right? It's no wonder it comes across in your artwork and stuff. And then when I read when I read that uh, bio of yours, like, of course, of course, it's gonna be creative like that. It's amazing. I can't have a normal bio. <laughs> anything, uh, right? Anything professional feels very uncomfortable to me. So. Yeah, yeah. Just the. Your creative mind is amazing, uh, and you can see it through your work. Thank I have you. a lot of questions. I asked my Facebook group as well um, oh, to good. see um, what kind of questions to ask. So I have a few. What got you into designing T-shirts, and did you start with T-shirts first? Uh, my whole professional career is pretty T-shirt-centered. I mean, I uh, ended up with T-shirts just because I'm an artist, yeah. Right. Probably like yeah. a lot of if a lot of the people who uh, who watch your videos or I assume are artists if they want to get into selling T-shirts online. So Most much are. they probably are, uh, you know, I was, you know, the weird little kid who, uh, you know, drew instead of going out and playing for recess in school. You know, that kid, uh, you know, now I'm a weird little man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, I went to Parsons and I, uh, you know, studied art there and I wasn't thinking about uh, T-shirts or apparel or anything like that. And I actually majored in illustration uh, without really thinking through uh, what would that would mean uh, career wise. Uh, so I just took the first job I could find, uh, which was for a button company, oh, which which, you know, I would have never known that's a thing, a button company, yeah. but it's a company that uh, manufactures and distributes, you know, buttons. I'm looking at this backwards, so I can't find my button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. buttons. Uh, well, those kind of buttons, I was thinking like buttons with artwork on it or something. No, no, that would make more sense if I was doing yeah. those. Kind of, no, this kind of button. Uh, and uh, they just needed somebody to uh, set up, uh, and I won't spend too much time on the button job, but, but it is a new <laughs> Uh, but what happened was I developed uh, some working relationships with companies in the fashion industry. So my next job after that was uh, in the fashion industry. I worked for uh, Tommy Hilfiger back when, Whoa. you know, Tommy Hilfiger was a super yeah. relevant thing. I mean, I don't want to say that he's irrelevant now, but, you know, he had his heyday. Uh, yeah. And so that was my first job. And eventually, as I worked and worked, uh, I worked my way into the department I wanted, which was doing the graphic T-shirts. Nice. Uh, and uh, when I was at Tommy Hilfiger, I was in the women's department. Uh, so I uh, took over designing graphic T-shirts for, uh, you know, the Tommy Hilfiger women's wow. department. My first big T-shirt thing. Yeah. And, uh, so I took on that job being very green uh, yeah. and really not knowing anything about, uh, you know, T-shirts and T-shirt design. I came into it at first just thinking I, uh, you know, I'm a natural designer. I'll just come up with these ideas, not understanding. And then eventually learning the hard way what it takes to make good T-shirt design. And yeah. 
you really, to do it properly, uh, you have to educate yourself and have an understanding of the history of uh, T-shirts. And I had to understand the history of fashion, too, to some mm -hmm. extent, because I was working for a major. Yeah, especially for Tommy Hilfiger. Like, they yeah, you got other some eyeballs on your stuff now, right? Like, yeah. I mean, he was yeah. self-taught, too. So, uh, yeah. you know, the environment there wasn't, uh, you know, in some ways it wasn't that fancy. But, uh, yeah, but a history of graphic t-shirts uh for sure and, and the other big thing that was uh uh you know my learning experience uh, my first time designing t-shirts was the uh the process of uh research and uh research of historical styles you know mm -hmm. because you know a lot of uh t-shirt design in fashion in the fashion industry then and still now is uh you know vintage looks and it was learning about vintage design styles and educating yourself about that and all this research that you need to do uh not to mention and this is relevant to i think what you like to talk about on your channel uh and probably a lot of these people are interested in which is the trend research because the fashion industry really moves more so than mm -hmm. the t-shirt industry the online t-shirt industry uh and you know you have you had to do shopping every uh, every season or several times every season. And back then it was actually physical shopping. So we'd go out to stores and shop and buy things. And see that, what's, what's relevant right at the moment. Oh, not relevant. We'd hang right. it up in rooms and that's part of how you, you design you, you would, how do, how do I, how do we capture this trend, but make it feel like at that time, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, how do we address all these trends, which trends are relevant for us to address and which, uh -huh. which aren't uh, all this stuff that, that, you know, graphic t-shirt designers uh in the pod world or it, anywhere selling online or or in store still have to yeah think about and it's really important to understand how to see what's out there and not just knock it off right uh, but to capture what's important and relevant and trend right uh but do it in your own uh creative way right to have it be an influence mm -hmm. and, uh, you're pretty useless as a fashion brand or as a designer or anything else if you're just giving people what's already there correct and especially yeah. in fashion if you're out in the store shopping it's already out there you're a year That's behind right. doing something just like that so so the the analogy used to be uh if you drop something in a pool right and you get the rings of the water right yes okay so right where it drops is the initial trend right so maybe that's what comes up from the streets or that's what came from uh the the, the fashion shows at paris right the center of you know uh the people who start the ideas right that's yeah. right and then each uh ring outwards is farther away so uh maybe tommy hilfiger was a few rings down and then a few rings you know a few uh, rings later, maybe it's something like Macy's where I ended up working later. And then maybe further out is really a uh, mass market, like a Target or something like that, yes. right? So if I yeah. work for Target, I can look at what maybe uh, someone like Tommy Hilfiger is doing now. And I could do it now. And it's probably right because they'll be a little behind, right? There's a few rings later. Oh, I get it. Yeah, I yeah. Want to be Right. I don't want to be doing what uh, what, you know, the really fancy brands or what's on the Paris runway now if I'm at Target. Right. The Target people are yeah, you're too far to removed. Yeah. So thinking Smart. in that way in terms of how you're interpreting trends and things like that, too. So that's where I started getting into T-shirts. And from there, every job I had was, uh, you know, uh, I was in the fashion industry and that's basically where I stayed. And so I just uh, went from, you know went through a few different places uh, and I was always the graphics, the graphic t-shirt uh, designer. So uh, I, uh, I ended up, uh, I was in the women's department at the time and ended up uh, working for, uh, for Macy's uh, and I worked my way towards uh, being the art director. So I was the art director wow. working, you know, uh, managing a, a team of artists doing that same kind of work so i was i was designing you know doing all the same trend research uh 
and shopping and you know the shopping for me a lot of times moved online instead of having to go out and do it because you know everything's so available now but all the same uh the same skills from that to what i'm doing now uh was basically a matter of uh the department that i worked for at macy's ceased to exist oh no uh, so the entire apartment uh, department was was uh, was out of a job, and I just took three months and I said I'm just going to live. So I just went to every museum I wanted to go to. I went to every uh, art gallery. I read every book I wanted nice. to saw every movie. Just kind of as I like to say, walked the earth. Uh, and uh, at the end of the three months, I said maybe three more. <laughs> right so I liked it. yeah and and i kept doing that for about a year and a half now again there's practical considerations i downsized my apartment i got went to a much cheaper apartment uh i was living very frugally and none of that felt like a sacrifice that was like i was everything i did but i liked better life better right uh wow. and then eventually after about a year and a half i started doing uh doing some work on my own uh and doing some drawings and uh, I looked into submitting them to uh, Threadless. And that's really where everything started because uh, Threadless seemed to take a liking to my work and they kind of blew me up a little bit. And I got a lot of exposure from that or, or my work did anyway. And that's when I started, uh, you know, having people reach out to me to do licensing uh, just from seeing... Yeah. The thread of things, but also things started going viral in at least yes. a modest way. So uh, it all happened, and I got some, I got licensing from it, and I got my career started from it. What a great but, story! Yeah, I thank you for your story. That is a great bro. story to learn where you came from. This leads to my second question, and my second question is this: All your designs currently have a certain style. Why did you choose that style for your brand? Well. I mean, I guess the first thing I'd say is I definitely wouldn't phrase it as uh, I chose the style. I don't, uh, you know, okay. I don't think of it as something I had much, uh, much, much choice in. Like, I don't think, a, uh, you know, and I'm not criticizing you for using the word. I think it's good that you use the word because yeah. it's, kind of, it's a good way to talk about it. But uh, I don't think that's how an artistic style happens or should happen, at least from my point of view, right? You don't, you don't uh, look out there and say, oh, I like this style, I like this style. Which one do I want to choose? And right, ah, because I see what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just an expression of yourself kind of is what you're yeah, saying. That's somebody yeah. else's stuff. Now, it could be an influence, right? You could like something, yeah. about, something about this. And the great thing about art is if I chose somebody else's style to draw, I probably wouldn't do it as well as them. So even right. just my failing to imitate their style properly, properly uh, is already sort of something new, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, it develops it develops from there. But you know, so but so it's not just about you know a big thing like integrity or anything like that. I mean, it is about that, but it's not just about that. It's about what's going to help you the best if you're choosing somebody else's style uh or choosing a style that you like and you want that one to be uh your style you're choosing someone that's something that somebody already does really well mm. you, you may not do it as uh well because it's originated from them and it springs naturally uh from them so seems to me better off to if you if you're doing your own like the only thing right uh, Lots of people draw way better than me, right? But no one is better than me at drawing the way I draw, right? Nice. That's a great quote. That's the way to do it, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's true, not just of me, just of me, right? That's true of anybody. If you have your own way of drawing, which if you let it and you get out of the way, it'll happen naturally. Nobody else really can do it, right? No one wow. can do it as well as you, right? There's there's nothing to compare it to. So uh, my style just developed naturally from Some as natural I was, evolution yeah yeah when i was in college a lot of times i would do my rough sketch my rough thumbnail sketch for what i wanted to do and then when i would do a finished piece it would it would get tight uh it would somehow in, in the pressure of doing a finished 
final piece, uh, I lost some of the energy, mm -hmm. some of the charm of my little sketch. So it happened yeah. all the time where my, uh, my art professor would be like, you know, this is, I like to sketch better, right? The sketch has some life, so has some energy, yeah. right? And in a weird way, even though in a way the way I draw now is there's something rigid about it, it's actually in a roundabout way, it it captures the charm of my original sketches. So that's that's uh, you know another part of why I kind of ended up uh, smart where I was. And and I would say the last thing that kind of determined my style is is my personality. Yes. I'm a really anxious person. Uh, uh, I'm a really uh, you know like a classic OCD uh, type of person. So I don't like chaos. You know, the more details and the more stuff and the more business happening in the art, it's more for me to have to have control over, right? So it it sparks anxiety. So having very organized art makes me feel comfortable because that's my personality. I need everything. I'm one of those oh. people. Anything's out of place, I can't relax. I got to have everything tidy so that I can relax my mind and think and focus. So I think that's why it ended up that way, too. And, you know, and that's before we get to, you know, the humor and everything, just but just the visual look of my art. I think it's from those things. Wow, that's a great explanation. I, I, I feel like now after you explaining that, I think there's a lot we can learn by just looking at someone's art, like kind of kind of get the feel of what the person is. Because now that you've oh, explained, yeah. like, um, because the way you are, that it kind of translates to your art. That's really cool. And I love how your evolution of your, your art, like it's a, it's a reflection of you. And like, you, you do need, like you mentioned this before earlier, like we have to kind of learn who we are in our art style and, and kind of get those early drawings in and early stuff in to kind of see what kind of person we are, what kind of art is going to come out of us. And that, that's kind of what is reflected on in your art and, you know, I, I didn't think of it that way, but that's that's really cool. Yeah, and you got to let it happen, and it, you let it happen. Let yeah, time. you got to give it some time uh, to happen too. And I mean, the other thing I would say, which you know, what I, what I may be doing here is answering all of your questions in one. No, that's fine. This is great. I love but, it. But you know, part of you know when I was telling you that story about uh, when I lost my job that I just didn't go into another job and just kind of lived. I didn't do art. I just kind of lived. That's, that's a huge part of it, right? What are you going to yeah. make art about if you got nothing going on in your life or if you, if you're nothing's inspiring you, uh, in your life? Um, you know, the other artist I'll name drop is Milton Glaser, right? The famous designer who, for anyone who doesn't know who Milton Glaser is, he's most famous for designing the, I love New York logo. Oh Yes. All, all sorts of other famous things. He did every type of design and illustration, but he was also a really smart guy, uh, smart about art. And uh, he said, I don't know what the exact quote was, but I remember him saying something uh, about, uh, you know, in order to make interesting art, you have to be an interesting person, mm. which doesn't mean you have to be like the most interesting man in the world, right? As you remember from the old commercial, uh, right. Dos Beer, right? Not the most interesting. And all it means it's is a reflection of who you are kind of thing. You, you do have to live to, yeah. to make art and, and allow it to be important, right? In other yeah. words, don't feel like you're uh, taking away from your work. If you want to go out and have some drinks or go take a walk or see a movie or read books or whatever, that's part of the work. It's important, right? Nice. Wow. Good points. I, um, I, I like that you talked about how you, um, like how your artwork, your style became your style and why, why that, uh, my follow-up question to that is how do you come up with these ideas and, and what's kind of your thought process? And I, I think a lot of people, uh, at least watch that watch this channel, um, want to know, like they're stuck, right? They don't know how to come up with different mm -hmm. ideas. What, what helps, helps you get ideas on, on what you're doing? Well, there's a, couple ways, there, there's a couple things. I mean, the first thing is part of what I was just saying is uh, it comes from being out there and living and doing. Uh -huh. I mean, f it, in my life, you know, it's an important part of my art process to go out for drinks with my girlfriend and, uh, you know, just 
uh, run our mouths and, you know, I say something funny once in a while, right? But, <laughs> yeah, it happens. Right? Or, you know, yeah. I, I go, I, I mean, I don't do it as much since obviously there's a pandemic, but, you know, going out and uh, to museums, not just art museums, but, uh, you know, uh, I read an enormous amount, right? Uh, right? All these things are part of where that stuff comes from because your brain has something to bounce off of, react to, right? And for me, it's really important all this uh, stimulation, all this input, it's not me going and looking at other t-shirt artists, right? It's not me looking at contemporary t-shirt designers right now. And that's, that's going to be a very, it, it becomes a very insular kind of uh, almost incestuous world. You get much more pure influence from something outside of what you're doing. Oh, that right? makes so much sense. So I don't look at t-shirts to get ideas for designing t-shirts and it's not that i only design t-shirts now it's it's central but it's not the only yeah. so i out in I the world really you're getting information at, yeah really limit what i look at from people who are in the same job as me and in the same world and you know doing the same kind of thing i, I that's it's not that i don't see what's happening but it's not what i look to for inspiration i really limit it because i want so i would rather look at uh abstract paintings and be inspired by that because it's a really pure expression of color and design and layout and, yeah. you, know, uh, a, you know, anything but the specific thing, because then my mind has stuff to work on and I have unique thoughts. Uh, but all these things are just based on what I am and who I am. And so it's all, it's, it's the living life stuff. Uh, but, but, but kind of doing it mindfully, right. And, and making sure you're doing it. And and I realize like most people work a day job, but it's not you know it's a little easier to said than done. You can't just kind of stroll around, but uh, you know, on your weekends or whatever. Or if, if I was working a day job, I would get ideas from all the bullshit I'd be dealing with at the day job, right? I did a day job for a lot of years, so yeah. Uh, it's, so it's all that stuff, right? But the other part of that is over time, I've trained myself and and. Lots of creative people do this, right? Like any stand-up comedian probably would tell you they just live life, but they got a little notebook, right? So I yeah. got a little notebook by my bed because a lot of times... Uh, yeah, it comes to you right before you sleep or when you get up or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. get up, and, uh, but I always have one in my pocket. And uh, so that's the second part of it is keeping track, right? Yeah, uh, just keeping track because ideas may come at any time. You got to be able to jot them down and write them down and... Right. I can see and that. Then, yeah. And then the other part of it is that's like the first, right? That's inspiration to idea. And there's a okay. whole refinement process and kind of brainstorming process too. So I can get those ideas. And then I, at some point I have to sit down and develop it. Right. Right. I have to think about, okay, this is a funny line. Uh, exactly. How do I word it? What's the funniest yeah. way? How do I lay it out? Yeah. yeah. What's the funniest way to even say it? Right. Which words do I choose? Or it's maybe just a, the concept is funny, but how, how do I say it? Right. Uh, and that's even before you get to what's the funniest way to draw it. That kind of goes along with uh, mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say. And there's all this refining and sketching and uh, everything else. But then there's also uh, conscious idea creation. Right. Like a brainstorming session, which, you know, that's a different thing that also I'll go out with my girlfriend and do is go out specifically, have our sketchbooks and the idea is to brainstorm, right? Sometimes okay. that's, there's a subject in mind. So it's not that different except that, you know, we'll sometimes do uh, idea generating things like uh, this will happen if I'm trying to work on greeting cards, right? Okay. So uh, Father's Day, right? Uh, yeah. That's the next one coming up, right? So maybe we just start by just kind of listing off a series of words that we think of, right? Uh, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, Bowling, kind of just brainstorming yeah. words at, at the Dad, beginning. Uh, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, just yeah. lists of words and then just start kind of, uh, you know, talking through them and bouncing off and seeing what pops off. And almost always with, for me, with, uh, you know, some wine or something like that it definitely helps uh, yeah. <laughs> for me. And that's that's the whole thing is, is a brainstorming session. And I would say the last part of all this is one of the other valuable things I learned doing a design day job for so many years is 
uh, again, because you get thrown into it and you got no choice, is uh, learning how to make yourself create on command because you have to, right? If it's oh, interesting if it's job every day. So there are methods, like the word list is one of them, but there are methods and there's also methods, you know, when I was in the fashion industry, it was like research was the kind of the thing that spurred the ideas, right? Yeah. Is, you know, uh, and again, it wasn't knocking things off, but that's a way you can kind of come up with ideas is like you're doing your research, you're finding these relevant things. And, you know, I put uh, these three different T-shirts I bought on the board and I'm like, wow, I like the, uh, you know, the concept of this one. I like, I think I would love to do something in that area. Well, this one, I really like how the type goes around this way and the thing. And then this one, uh, there's some kind of, uh, you know, half tone effect they made that looks really little of this, little of that, you know, sometimes that's a way to uh, put things together, but it's, this, it's the idea of how to spark your brain so that you can create more yeah. or less at will, like, you know, when you, when you need to. The other part of um, being able to kind of get yourself to create on a regular basis and when you need to is uh, uh, creating the environment. Yes. Right. So, you know, you can see I have my little comfortable mm -hmm. space here. Surrounded with by inspiration looks like too. Well, yeah, I got all my inspiration, but, you know, uh, I mean, I do actually read these books, but I also love the look of piles of books it's just calming and comfortable and it looks mm -hmm. beautiful i love wood grain right i'm cr i've created this environment that just relaxes my mind and i feel really comfortable and happy and inspired and everything looks good to me here and that's important right creating this environment yeah. so you know and and also part of that is you know if i got uh if i got a to-do list of you know several things that i need to do today i like to uh, get all that out of the way right first and I like my time when I'm working on uh, art is it's, I feel it needs to be open ended so that there's no pressure on it. Right. That's that's yeah. in the way of my mind. I only focus on this. I'm going to get the lighting right. Uh, I'm going to get some, nice. you know, some hot coffee or tea. I'm creating a really happy, comfortable environment to yeah. create. Right. So, like so that. That, part, that part's important, too. There was something else you mentioned that I wanted to jump off on, but I don't remember now. So. Oh, yeah, we're fine. We'll, we'll probably get to it later. I, I'd love yeah. to ask you another question. Um, this one, um, I think, could really help. You've been in the t-shirt industry for a long time, worked with you know big brands. What are some basic design tips t-shirt designers should know? I see a real relationship between t-shirt design and poster design. To me, the biggest similarity is it's mm -hmm. supposed to communicate something oh now, good yeah maybe sometimes maybe sometimes uh it's not so literal like some t-shirts could just be decorative and maybe they're not trying to communicate any particular idea but they're communicating a vibe or something but the point is any kind of commercial art needs to communicate right number one is how do you get someone to focus on that right how do you make the image uh compelling enough uh that you, it pops out mm -hmm. all that other stuff. Right. But also the only way it's going to be noticed is if you get it fast. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's quickly. So you're walking by what makes you stop, what holds your gaze and then maybe three seconds to just get the gist of what yeah. you're looking at. Hopefully to the point that maybe you want to, uh, go in and investigate further. And the same thing for t-shirts, right? You need to design this thing in a way that communicates pretty quickly. Now, I had my own solution to that, which is I work uh, very simple, right? right? And very clean and very organized. And, you know, my stuff, uh, and this, I'm not trying to do it, say, do this in, a, in an arrogant way. I just mean as because right. my, the, my approach- That's, that's the way you approach, answered that question or the- yeah. Yeah. Because my, but the way I design is so much simpler uh, and I have bigger, end up with bigger, bolder shapes. Uh, it does pop out amongst all the busyness of other stuff, but I don't want people to think that's, that's not I, the only way to do it, but yeah, that, that is the only way to do it. Yeah. To have it read quickly. Right. Right. Yeah. The structure 
of whatever you're doing. You can have the most detailed thing possible, right? Most detailed thing imaginable. But any, any good artist uh, who works in a very detailed way, the structure of the composition will still be simple. Oh, I and see. Organized, maybe not even simple, but it'll be organized and clear, right? There's going to be some clarity to the structure uh, that will pull you in just as much as something simple like what I do. Uh, and then you can dig into all those uh, details. So, uh, so for t-shirts, clarity, right? Uh, which yeah. leads to a quick read is, uh, I think, huge. The other design thing, as opposed to conceptual, uh, is that that in my experience, I see um, artists struggle with is integrating your typography. Mm, yeah, good one. Because, uh, more people, I think, who get into t-shirt art like to draw, and then graphic design is maybe more of a learned skill. So people tend to think of the image and then uh, do the type in my mind as an afterthought, right? Make the image. Okay. Now where can I put letters, right? Where the way to, the way to do it is don't think of one and then do the other. Think of the whole composition oh, first, smart. right? In other words, yeah. if you're doing a little rough thumbnail sketch, the letters should be part of that yeah. plan. Right. And then when you go into whatever software you're using, Photoshop or Illustrator, try to make what is in the sketch happen and it'll be more organic as opposed to just opening up the software and opening the type tool and letting that almost dictate what's happening, right? Mm. I mean, I use very few uh, fonts, right? Like most of my work, there's probably five different fonts at the most, right? That I use mm -hmm. in all of my work. And um the vast majority of them are modified quite a bit the way I use them. So that's the other thing is do you, you, if you're using fonts, don't be limited by them. It's just a tool like anything else. In other words, the only reason I use those fonts is because they look like what I want it to look like. In other words, the same, hand, the same hand that did the drawing, that's what the lettering looks like in my mind. So in the rough sketch, that's what the lettering looks like. So I've chose fonts that feel like, uh, a little bit like the way I draw, but they're not in my head. So I use these fonts kind of as a starting point and then I change them. I redraw them, I uh, adjust them. Uh, you know, people forget you could do whatever you want to a font, right? right? You could just use a font as like a template and then just as a guideline for where you're going and then you can draw it yourself over it. So thinking about typography in that way i think helps a lot but also integrating it. in other words it's part of the whole picture it's not image then typography yeah. where can i squeeze that in it's the whole thing at once and this is why i like looking at abstract art and, and why it's good training is because we get we don't see typography clearly because it means something we know what these letters represent so we're not seeing it so a really good thing to do is to kind of squint at your layouts and try to forget that these are letters and words that you can read and just oh, nice. think about it like an abstract shape, right? Yeah. Then you need to all work together kind of thing, yeah. And then you're assessing your entire composition and you're not making a distinction between letters and uh, images, right? Which is how you get a really good yeah. Uh, composition. Yeah, that's great. I love that because I... A lot of times I, I get these DMs from other people and they want me to rate their work. And I, I kind of know what, like they, they just throw out words and they, they put a graphic here and a text here. And like, it's almost like a, almost like a collage of mismatched pieces. Like right. when you're first starting out, right. And it, it's not all cohesive. And what you explained is great because I, I think people will kind of understand what you're saying is like, it, it kind of all needs to work together. And, and you, what I loved about what you said is, like you do it from the beginning. It's not an afterthought. It's not like, oh, I have a good idea for a graphic and now let's try and put the words in there to make it fit. It's like the whole thing is the piece, the the text That's and the cool. font and the design and like get all that, you know, drawn out or whatever first and kind of get that idea first and then then put it together. So that, that's great thought. The other, the other great, uh, what I think is a great 
t-shirt uh, design tip from yes. from a conceptual uh, point of view is uh, it doesn't hurt to think about why anyone would want it, what you're yeah absolutely. Design. Absolutely. Uh, the one way to approach it. One way to approach yeah. it is like the way you, you teach, I think, in your videos uh, is, you know, trend based. And, uh, you know, right now it looks like people want whatever it is, sloths. Right. And, okay. yeah. and then so then you are thinking about what people want. Uh, and it's it's one way to approach it. And you can do your own, uh, you know, you draw sloth. Your sloth. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Right. And, and, and what is, what, 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 you know, what ideas make sense around a sloth and what, you know, whatever it is, but uh, that's one way to do it, but it's not the only way, right? I, my approach to it is, uh, you know, because I'm not trend oriented and, and I, I think more in terms of, you know, uh, evergreen, right. Versus trend. Is that's, that's like the business that's term. The thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we still do that. <laughs> or whatever, but, you know, the, the idea, because I would rather, uh, it makes more sense too, because evergreen will sell all year long whenever. Right. That's, yeah. that's kind of the idea. Yeah. Well, and people watching are probably too young to remember this, but like, I'm just thinking of Y2K. My point being, if I had done Y2K t-shirts at that time, they would have been real good selling shirts at the time, but then useless ever yeah. again. So yeah. I like the idea that things I designed, you know, a decade ago still could be my best sellers. They're all yeah. along they've been uh, making money for me and they will continue to. So I like, I like that from a productivity uh, standpoint, but in terms of the t-shirt design tip of, you know, thinking about why someone would want something, uh, my approach was i'm a person i feel this way very strongly uh i'm gonna do a natural expression because what i'm doing makes me laugh uh i relate to it i'm not that weird right there's gonna be somebody else so that's another way to do it but i do think about it right like i do sometimes think of ideas or create things that are weird enough that i, I realize that's probably not something that other people are going to, that very many other people are going to understand or relate to. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. so you, you still apply that thinking to it. Sometimes it means I don't do it, but sometimes I do it, but I know, you know, uh, I like to call it pro bono, right? I do, once in a while I'll do really you weird things. You want to do it. Yeah. Right. Just because I, I want to make it, uh, but pro bono, like that's when lawyers work, uh, you know, uh, without any upfront money. In other words, I'm not expecting to get anything from it. Right. This is not going to, but I, I just want to yeah. make Doing it for the love. <laughs> but yeah, be thinking about, you know, uh, what, you know, do, do think, don't be limited by it and don't, uh, don't let that dictate and control everything you do because otherwise who, who are you in that? Right. But yeah. you can check yourself. You can think about it. You can think about why someone would care and that may help you choose which, of your ideas you want to do, right? You have all these original ideas, but if you know, right? If I have 10 original ideas, one's about a sloth, and I happen to know that sloths are trending, let's put that one first, right? Yeah, you can yeah. you can still you can still apply these things even if you're not really strictly uh, following trends. And the last thing I'll say about that is one of the things we learned in uh, you know in the fashion industry was. Uh, I don't remember exactly. I think the term they call it like the awe factor. Like when you see a baby and you awe, right? Oh, awe, like that. that was, right. You're going for an emotional response, right? Because that's right. what motivates people to buy things. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, I agree with that 100%. Right? So yeah. I am I am uh, with my things. Uh, I'm pushing an emotional button most of the time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, thank you for those tips. Those are those are great t-shirt tips. I'm gonna end with this last question here. What keeps you going and how do you get out of creative block if you if you do have it? I mean, in terms of getting out of the creative block, I mean, I have kind of already touched on a lot of that stuff, right? Where it's yeah. the you know, the idea of uh surround your your space, right? And all that. And going out and getting some and going out, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Doing life and kind of just 
Right. Like for instance, if, if I, you know, if I'm, if I, let's say I'm going into, I'm trying to work on some greeting cards and I'm doing, uh, you know, and it's like, I gave the example of Father's Day earlier. A thing that really helps if you're kind of running into a brick wall is, and you're not really thinking of anything, is you tell yourself, okay, Father's Day, that's on my plate. I got to deal with Father's Day cards, right? Yeah. And forget it and just whatever, go for a walk, you know, go do your thing. It's It's working. It's working it's in, in the, the back. back of your mind, but it's not the yeah. front of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. I and guess. Every, you're taking in, in that time, some part of your brain is running it all through the Father's Day filter, right? Uh, nice. So, so uh, that's one of the ways to do it too. That's, you know, and, you know, and, and I, I did touch on uh, a, a lot of those things, so I won't repeat myself too much, uh, but that's kind of the way to kind of always keep it going. But I think the other reason that, you know, uh, so I'm doing this on my own, uh, you know, about a decade. And yeah. uh, one of the reasons that I'm, you know, I'm able to keep coming up with ideas is, uh, well, one of the practical reasons is at some point you end up with like a backlog, right? Because I do all these things I was talking about. I do brainstorms. I'm always thinking of ideas. When I think of them, I write them down. Right. All so you have a bunch of them already that haven't been done probably. I got a, an enormous backlog. I got piles at this point. Yeah. Even if I, I could not think of a new thing for, you know, probably a year and, and then had stuff to, to do. So the backlog is good. And that's why it's good to kind of, uh, you know, keep track of everything. But the other thing is, this is again, you know, and, you know, I want to say I'm only talking about my point of view, right? But that's the advantage in my mind to, uh, doing something unique and individual versus and, and, and authentic to you versus uh, having your ideas and the things you create kind of uh, uh, inspired externally or, mm -hmm. or uh, motivated externally, right? Because yeah. then you have to always get it from somewhere else. Whereas I'm, I'm always going to be me. So I'm always going to be anxious. I'm always going to have my personality. I'm always going to have my point of view. So it's not like effort to keep coming up with my kind of ideas because. Yeah. Cause it's just an expression of yourself and you're growing, at, yeah. you're, you're learning and growing and everything. So of course you're going to have more and more stuff. So. And it's almost like a, a version of that cliche that everyone always says about, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, do something that you love and you never work a day in your life or, you know, that, mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that cliche. And, you know, I don't enjoy cliches and platitudes like that, but it's, it's a version of that. Right. So in other words, if your work stems from something that you naturally are, it's a lot less effortful. Right. The going, whereas if you developed, uh, you know, if like when I was in the fashion industry, I, I found ways to keep going, but it was harder because it wasn't my own inspiration, right? I had to look at it at the market, mm -hmm. keep going out to it, pulling and pulling things in, and the next thing, and it was always like every season, like, oh, again, I gotta come up with this. Whereas, if if you're doing something natural and authentic, it's not, it's not as effortful, right? Yeah. I think one thing that is, you know, could be interesting or useful for your people to think about uh, as they you know, kind of work towards making um, art a business with, and this applies to t-shirts, but it applies to other things too, uh, is the idea of licensing versus uh, versus doing commissioned art. Since I already had a whole career of uh, being directed, right, working for somebody else, uh, I really wanted to do what I wanted to do. And licensing, when you when you have that goal, licensing is the best way to do it because I can just create what I want to create, put it out there, and I have a library of images that companies can license and uh, you know purchase the rights to use for a particular period of time uh, uh, in a particular geographic area and you know, then you have to just kind of manage uh, your, you know, your licensing picture. And I took on an agent recently to kind of help me 
uh, with that, but I did it myself for a long time. And for me, it's preferable to uh, the other way of doing illustration and design, which is also a totally legitimate way to do it, which is uh, being a designer for hire and uh, someone hires you to work on their project. Right. Right. Which once in a while I do it because they're hiring me to do it in my way. Uh, but for me, the passive income thing lets me do what I do and uh, put it out there and then they can decide whether they want it or not. And the challenge is um, how do you, uh, how do you get your work in enough places to, give you an income. So t-shirts are part of it, but, uh, you know, I've taken licensing and greeting cards and calendars uh -huh. and, uh, pretty much everything you could think of. And then the last part maybe of how you think about, uh, licensing is whether you're designing into a particular product, like your people are mostly designing into t-shirts and they're thinking about making a design that someone would wear on a t-shirt. Uh, do you design for a particular products or do you design uh, a general interesting design and how it applies to other things. So that's how I've mostly done it is I've done what occurs to me and what I think is good. And most of those designs make sense on a number of things. So I've been able to license yeah. a lot, but there are things like greeting cards, for instance, where it doesn't work as well. Right. Uh, yeah, greeting cards some of the designs don't translate yeah yeah and it, it's there's something about a greeting card it's a very particular kind of communication the message is pointed from one person to another it's sort of addressing somebody and uh i've found that to do greeting cards uh i got to do a little more of designing specifically into that uh category so that's another one of those things you uh you know you have to make decisions between and and, and how you're going to kind of focus your efforts in order yeah. to get enough licensing to kind of build up a passive income that you can kind of live on. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I was, I've been, I was thinking about licensing uh, a little bit. So um, when, when you do licensing, you kind of have to, cause my thought is if you're licensing stuff, it has to be all your original artwork. First of all, I would think, and you, it does, is it helpful that you have kind of a, like a known style, like your, your, your portfolio is kind of like more consistent. Like you, I don't know. Does that make sense? What I'm trying to ask? Uh, yeah. I mean, for licensing, that's, it's hard. I mean, I only know my own experience really, but it's hard for me to imagine how you could do licensing successfully without having a, uh, you know, a style. I mean, unless you maybe had several, like a few styles, but right. you could kind of show a portfolio. It has to be all tied together, right? Like this well, is. Well, it's just it's just how uh, how else do they know? Like yeah, to what is you? you? Yeah, right. <laughs> you? Yeah. Or, or or you know, because for instance, my licensing agent, yeah, he represents a number of artists. So so his agency shows a bunch of different styles, but each one is their own thing, and uh, so somebody who's going to license the work knows what they're. Uh, what they're going to get. So if somebody another... has an original style and they have a, bu a bunch of things, like a big, how much, how, how many do you think they would need like in a portfolio? Would they need 20, 50 oh. kind of designs or more? That's a good question. Um, well, let's start here. I would say I probably have, at this point, I've kind of stopped counting, but maybe between two and 300 things two in my life. Wow. But, that's a this I've been doing it a while. So yeah, yeah. I feel like if you had like something like uh, 20 or something, I, I it, it, it might be tough. I mean, although I think when I had a number similar to that at the very beginning, I did start to get some licensing, but you find even though licensing is simpler and easier in terms of dealing with your uh, quote unquote client, because they're just buying what you have more or less instead of giving you direction and telling you what to do. Correct. Yeah. There is still a back and forth. There's still 
things they need and adjustments. Yeah, we're looking and, for this kind of thing or whatever, right? Yeah. And I, you know, if you're if you've only been working print on demand online, you don't have to deal with anybody, right? There's Correct. no one to answer. Yeah, so it's a little different. Which is great in one sense, but in another sense, you're on your own to try to make something happen, which is not easy, uh, right? To to get some to generate yeah. some sales and some income. Uh, when you're licensing uh, directly to uh, companies, there's you don't have as much freedom from dealing with people as you do with POD, uh, but you don't and you don't have as much as if uh, you know you're doing commission work for somebody, uh, but you're going to have to deal with people. And if you've worked with companies and buyers and things like that, uh, even a little bit, you know that it's very often, it's most of them, it's not super straightforward. They have, there's a, there's a lot of people, uh, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. There's a lot of people with a point of view. Uh, everyone has their own, some of it's subjective, and then they have all their own uh, you know, parameters and criteria. So you'd be surprised. You think I got 20 home run designs here, right? They're just going to take them and put them on t-shirts and coffee mugs and whatever. But you'd be surprised how 20 could get narrowed down to very few that this company feels like they could actually license. Oh, uh, I see. It's on all the, you know, who knows what kind of different considerations and yeah. opinions and everything that there are. Right. Uh, so, it's safer to have a bigger number for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to say. So more is better for sure. <laughs> more is better. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think if you get, you get, you know, uh, more, uh, you know, getting closer to like three digits, I think it'd be easier. It's not that you couldn't start. It's just, it'll be a little more challenging because last thing you want is you get an opportunity, right? You get your work in front of somebody. They're actually like your work. They're interested in maybe licensing something and they yeah. look at everything and they're like, I probably can't use this. Can't use this. Uh, you got anything else? What else you got? And then if you're like, no, it's it's a shame, right? Because it's, yeah. it's not that it's easy. Their opportunity, yeah. So it just it, it's smoother. Yeah, and lots smoother. If you, if you just take time and work on your portfolio, and the more designs you make, the better you're, the better you are probably, and the, the quality starts going up. So, if it's possible to take your time and, uh, you know let it develop, uh, the better. Oh, and the other thing you, you brought up, which is also, uh, could be relevant for some people is, uh, the idea of ownership, I guess you mean, uh, I don't know, maybe if some people use. Yeah. Uh, so the, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of times people on POD, they see a design and like, Oh, I want to take this and kind of maybe use the same words and, and put my own spin on it. Whereas that that's not really an original design. Whereas what, what you're doing is like total, original concept you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. so I, I just want to make sure that people can't go like do the print on demand model where i'm just going to take take something i see and and kind of just change it a little bit and that, now, now, now that's mine that's part of my portfolio and i can license that that's it, it yeah. should be I mean, kind of like a more original idea creative idea like you're doing and you know what i yeah. mean yeah I mean, to be clear people shouldn't do that on print on demand either right <laughs> they shouldn't do that either but it's you know, the law is very, it can be very, there's a lot of gray areas in the law about it. Uh, but it's certainly, if you're, if your work is really built on other people's work, it's like, yeah, why are you doing that? Go, go do something that Original. is easier to make money at than, than creating art for t-shirts, right? If, it, yeah. if, if it's built on other people's stuff. Uh, now, you were talking about the idea of you know, just taking the, the, the what it says on somebody else's T-shirt and using it. I don't think you can get in legal trouble for that. Right. It's just shitty. It's just kind of lame because yeah. you didn't think of it. I mean, now some things are just kind of. Yeah. And I, my guess is the people that are doing licensing probably have already seen, you know, they, they know what's out there already and they're going to look at your stuff yeah. and like, yeah, that. This is the derivative of whatever we just saw. So they well, want, they're, they're looking for original, like creator artwork, like yeah, your yeah. your uh, brand kind of. Yeah, right. You don't want to give them something that they can uh, they can get elsewhere and maybe get elsewhere better if it's the original yeah. thing. But uh, like I said, you uh, people shouldn't work that way anyway. But 
the stakes are not as high in POD. You, you, people get away with it. Right. Yeah, they can I, get away I, with it on POD, I, but I, not in licensing. They get away with it. The yeah. stakes will be higher. You're taking a bigger risk, you definitely, if you're doing that with, with real licensing, uh, yeah. because um, you do have other people to deal with. The, you're, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a small way, you're joining a little team kind of temporarily. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, and the licensing and, people don't want to get in trouble either, right? They don't want to take the hit for copyright infringement nope. or things like that. And you so, think, you yeah. think they're going to work with you again if... Uh, if yeah, uh, they'll never work with you again. Yeah. <laughs> if you got them in trouble. <laughs> uh, now, you were talking... I, at first, I thought you were talking about ownership, that you were talking about maybe uh, maybe somebody who's more of a graphic designer than a illustrator. And, you know, there is legitimate... Uh, I guess you call it clip art, although that makes it sound bad. But you know, yeah. real you didn't draw. It, you didn't draw it yourself, yeah. Right. They they use stock art. Maybe is a better stock way. Art, to yeah. use it. Uh, you definitely need to have all the ownerships. Yeah. For any pieces now, fonts. Uh, you have to look at every font you use or buy, uh, and some are free. But and I'm sure a lot of people use. The free look fonts. at the licensing agreement, right? Yeah. And all right. Yeah. You uh, because again. People get away with things, but the stakes are higher. If you did, if you did get called Correct. on something, uh, the stakes are a little bit higher. So, you know, the ideal is really do your, you know, doing your own uh, original stuff. And yeah, you have to own everything. Here's a great example: like right? if you use photography in your art, right? Yeah. Uh, people who use photo art, photo collage, type art, they might not always be the one who takes the picture, right? But you have to have the rights to use that picture. It could be a complicated like licensing for licensing uh or uh you you purchase the rights through you know but and you, you have to take care of that stuff uh and the stakes are a little bit higher than pod well thanks so much david um this has been a great interview i i love all the knowledge that you have that you shared with us uh your history and just teaching us uh, all the different ins and out of being a even a better t-shirt designer and 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 possibly licensing too, which is which is uh, really cool. Um, I think it's really neat. Um, before I end, uh, where can people find you and what, what's the best place? I know we have the uh, Instagram right there, David Olenek, uh, any place else? I, I have the your link tree. I'll, I'll put that in the description. Any any place that people should go and yeah, find you? I mean, Instagram is kind of the best place right now to, okay. see, uh, to see my uh, work and what I'm doing. I'm on Facebook too, uh, easy to find. And... Uh, and pretty much all my products and uh, all the stuff I have out uh, is in the link tree, which is attached to uh, my Instagram. So it's real simple, oh, easy, uh, one-stop shopping, right? You click the one thing on the Instagram and then the, uh, the link tree will show you all this. Yeah, all the different link tree. Play around. And I never mind if people, uh, you know, reach out and DM me or okay. whatever. If they don't, if they want something of mine, they don't know how to find it. Uh, I don't, I don't mind if, uh, people do that wow, i hope your audience so nice. is, i hope your audience isn't that big so that <laughs> we'll see we'll see what happens <laughs> uh, invitation to everyone watching um, but, uh, yeah don't 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 bother david too much but if if you do have a legitimate uh thing i'm sure he, he's oh, been he's really nice him. to me actually so uh, he, he, he has that answered my questions thank you so much david it's yeah thank you appreciate it yeah and thanks for this um I'm going to put this together and this is going to, going to be great. A uh, master class of, of teaching. I'm sure you could do even better with given more hours and more time just teaching us how to come up and create t shirt You've been in the t-shirt industry like uh, for a very long time and have a lot of knowledge to share with us. So I'm so happy that you were able to, to be here and do this interview. Thanks. I appreciate it. It was, it was a pleasure talking to you and, you know, good luck trying to edit uh well, that's <laughs> no problem i i may just leave it a lot of people just put these on and just listen like uh, and then you know do their drawings or whatever they they just love listening to things it's almost like a podcast so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Way, yeah that's how yeah. i do it that's how i do it with yeah. Them, so yeah, yeah I, so. i'm happy to have a hour and a half two hour uh you know podcast sometimes yeah, so this would be great. So no worries about that. Uh, I think people will still love it. so much good information here. So thank you again, David. We'll see you. All right. Thank you. Bye.